Okay, this is a YouTube uh, video I'm going to post here on filling or actually ballasting your tractor tires with uh, non toxic propylene glycol. And um, that's what I have here in this uh, jug. I was able to buy this from uh, West Marine, uh, it's 55 gallons. What I'm going to do here is split this jug between the two tires. These are the big uh, turf uh, 355. 80 20s um, from Bridgestone. Okay. Oops. Still going, right? Yeah. Okay. So here's what you need. And here's what I'm doing. This is a tank. I'm going to call it the Wessel because I do. It's short. It's a. Uh, oh, I've been calling it. Ves it's a vessel, but I call it Wessel. Anyway, put a jack uh, under your uh, axle here so that you take some weight off the tire so you can. Put the stem all the way at the top. Now these are tubed tires right now. The tires are not tubed tires. They're they're both. You can run them either way. But from the factory, they throw tubes in them, so that's great. Um, this is a specific uh, type of tube. It, the stem comes off to the side, but uh, made for this rim, made for this tire. But you can do this on 24s or whatever you whatever you got. It really doesn't matter. So there's an adapter I have right here. You can buy those online. It's like a Schrader adapter. I stole that off of a um, fix-a-flat can. Um, just double hose barb into this little hose here. Um, then I come over here, and this is a little shut-off valve here. It's a quarter inch. Um, this is a little quarter inch inline um, filter. You can change the, uh, the in inner parts out. It has a 10 micron filter in it right now. All that's there for is because your tank uh, sheds rust a little bit, crap, whatever, junk. You don't want to force any of that into your Schrader or hell, have it in your tire. So now here's the important part. It doesn't matter what Wessel you use as long as the Wessel has a bottom. So everything, all the contents in this tank is going to completely come out. And I have a fill at the top, very important. So you know you can fill your Wessel to the to the top and then you're good to go my air goes in here it goes to the top of the tank and it forces the material downwards and into the tire okay um, I have this little top here this is what I thread it and this is what I watch my pressure here is the danger 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 part this is a long process don't speed things up and think you're a big hero and blow your tire because that tire only takes 14 pounds that's maximum pressure on that puppy. Other tires are different, I understand that, and you can play your games and do whatever you want to do, but here I try not to exceed 14 pounds. So right now I took my piece of tape, I rough, I'm rough. i working on my left tire, I've already put one bottle in. I let the air purge out. Remember, the tire's not full yet, it's not up to the valve stem. The material I just put in displaced the air, or tried to, so it compressed the air. Now I let all the air out until there's absolutely nothing coming out of the tire and you can hear that. Okay, so over here I got my simple transfer pump. Um, this is a little overkill. Uh, it's good volume, but it's like a magnetic coupling acid pump, blah, blah, blah. I got it for $18 on eBay, that's why I have it. It sucks because it's non-priming, but on the end of this hose I got that little check ball thing and you jam the hose, gyrate it up and down and it fills the tube and then it primes itself and she goes. And then I have here my little quarter inch uh, nipple fill stem here with my ball valve to control my filling process. So I shut it off obviously and she keeps prime. So what I'm going to do here is fill the next vessel up. Now it's important that you don't want anything going into the tire as I'm filling this. So I've just I've let all the air out. I'm going to close this down so nothing leaves my vessel. Excuse me, vessel. Okay, so I shut that down. Okay, everything's open, so I'm gonna fill now. And until I cap this, I won't write that I did another thing just so I don't forget. So what I do over here is, and I'm gonna get my cord, plug my pump in. Okay, got my nozzle over here. Still filming. Open it up, and there she goes. Okay, so now I'm just going to carefully, I've got my little light here, and what I do when I get to the top, I notice she's coming, and I can control my ball valve 
to get a perfectly full cylinder. So I'm going to stop tape and do that now. Okay, so I've just stopped my pump, closed my valve off to keep my prime, and I filled the Wessel up to the top. So now I can uh, close this. You can put you can put ball valves on those too. I just wasn't about to buy a whole bunch of excuse me, I keep blocking the speaker. I wasn't about to buy a whole bunch of ball valves just to do this stupid crap, so I had those laying around. This you could also throw a ball valve on there, but I think it's it's easier to see how high I'm filling if that's um as short as possible. If I had a big ball valve, it would be like a joke. Okay, now here's the deal. You can open this up because everything's sealed now. Now you're linking your tank to your tire, but nothing happens yet until you get some charge behind it. Now remember, don't go over your 14 PSI, but here's the deal. I can charge this cylinder up as high as I want. Why? Because I know I'm not exceeding... That's 60, by the way. Get a gauge, too, that's in your working range. Don't get like a 100 pound gauge so you can't see what the hell's going on. But um, you see there's, the air's going down quick because pressure's going down quick because the volume of air in here is very nil right now. See how fast it goes down. But you can hear it going into the tire. So here, I'm gonna keep a good, good steam behind it because I know I'm not exceeding the pressure to tire yet. Thing. So that's what you do until, but you want to stand by because you don't want to have this so full of air at the end at 60 PSI, run out of fluid, and then the air starts filling in the tire, putting the 60 pounds of this tank in your tire. If you're close to the top, that could be bad because you could exceed the uh, pressure rating of your tire. So what I like to do is just stand by with a chair and a beer and watch the process happen see now you could regulate your incoming supply to it whatever you want hell you can put it at 15 or 20 and walk away and go to church or whatever the hell you go and come back and be like oh tank's empty i think you know whatever at least you didn't go over your deal it takes all day but you know you wouldn't go over your pressure so that's how you do that and i'm going to come back to you and this is uh empty so i can show you what it sounds like Okay, this is to show you what happens when it runs out. And I just had to stop it, but I'm gonna reopen it back up. Cause I heard, I heard all this juice fly out of this tank and you'll see the pressure drops rapidly. So now I'm filling this tire. Don't wanna do that. So what you do is you stop. But remember, it's not up to the valve stem yet. So all you do is you disconnect your air here. And all you do is let the air out of your vessel. And now, if you reach a zero, you can uh, take your gauge off, take your fill port off, I should say. Sorry. Okay, I just loosened it up. Sorry, the video is erratic, but okay. So take that off. Your tank's at zero. Now let the air out of your tire. The pressure that you just pent up. I could have shown you what that was, but so basically just bleed off. Now the air that's coming out of that tire is whatever was in this vessel occupied the air in the tire. Now I'm letting it back out. When the tire goes back to zero. I start with another tank full, and that's how you do it. And I'm going to go three tanks on this because I know I can fit it. Um, I'm not going to have enough of the um, propylene gly uh, glycol, but I'm going to get uh, whatever I don't, whatever I can't make. I'll buy in uh, one gallon jugs to take the uh, take up the slack. So that's that. Now this tank's kind of dirty and there's some rust, so in between whatever's, I, I take my little filter apart, but 
if you had a new tank, you wouldn't even have to worry about that damn filter, but I got so much rust coming out of here. And that's a little scary because it means the tank's compromised. But, all right. And that's pretty much it, I think. Okay, I've got almost three jugs in there, but I wanted to show you what I've done. Basically, I've cut the air off. I shut this off. Took my air off. Then I closed this. And I opened this up. And what it did was I heard it bubbling air back just to check what my pressure was in my tire. So you see, almost three jugs in there, and I didn't even cross over five pounds. But just for ha-has, I'm going to bleed the air off of the tire. You hear it bubbling now. So I didn't quite get the third tank in, but it's okay. What I'm doing is I'm bleeding my tire air off, getting it to go to atmosphere, lowering the pressure of my tire, and then I'll commence with the refill to push the rest of this material back in. You can hear it. The air is just coming up through it. So no big deal. We'll let that bleed off a little bit. As soon as it stops, I'll rehook up the air and continue pushing the rest of the fluid into the tire. And I think that's going to be it. That's three jugs. That's more than half. So this, I'm going to have about 600 pounds of ballast here. That's pretty impressive. Try and do that with wheel weights. It's, it's insane. You can never do it. So that's, uh, yeah, because you're looking at 300 pounds of wheel weight. <laughs> I'd have to fill that whole room with something. Okay, so that was three tanks just went in. Disconnect your air. I, I got the, I had to shut the valve off quick so the air wouldn't go into the tire and overpressurize it. So I bleed off my tank. Wait till I get to zero. Or below the safe range. You don't want to force any air into the tire. And then I open up my valve here and let the air out of the tire. You can hear it go now. Once the air is out of the tire, I can disconnect my apparatus because that's three whole cylinders. That's enough ballast in that tire. Things going to be insane. But remember, my valve stem's on the top right now. So I didn't quite get to the valve stem, but I know this puppy's loaded. She's going to be heavy. Oh, yeah. Cool. That's it. I'll put... um probably going to get two tanks full into the other tire and then I'm going to end up running out so I'll have to complete a full tank with the jugs.